The next important data type is a dictionary. And this one is a more complex container, but still just a container for other variables. This one always has a key and a value pair. The example for that I have is this one. In here, we have a key and we have a value. The key right now is an integer, the one. But it could also be any other data type. Python is fairly flexible here. And then we have a value, this one here, a list. But again, it could also be any other data type. What you ultimately have to understand about dictionaries is that they are a container, but a more organized one, where every value has a key associated and you would use the key to access the value. That way you wouldn't go by indexing, you would instead have specific values. We're gonna cover that in more detail later on, but let's start playing around with that. Let me start by creating a test dictionary. And a dictionary you always create with curly brackets. And inside of the curly brackets, you need a key, then a colon, and then a value. Both of those have to be valid Python data types. For example, for the key, let me call it capital A. And the value could just be an integer, let's say one, two, three. This would now be one key value pair. If you want to add a second one, you would add a comma and then the second key value pair. Let's say I want to call this one B. And now I need a colon again. And for the value now, I want a list with the values, I guess, one, two, and three again. I guess let me print this one so we can see the result. If I run this, we can see we have a dictionary with two key value pairs. Right now, the key is always a string, but this doesn't have to be the case. You could also use a number like one and then give it the value of, I guess we haven't used a Boolean yet, so I can just add true in here. If I now run this, we get another key value pair. The one limitation you do want to be aware of here is you cannot duplicate keys. For example, if I added another A with, I don't know, let's say another value, and if I now run this, this first value has disappeared. The reason being that once we add the same key, we are overwriting the original key value pair. Although most of the time that really isn't an issue you are too concerned about. And once again, you also have a ton of methods you could be using for dictionaries. To go through all of them, here is W3Schools with a list of all of the methods you have available. Some that you are going to use fairly often are values, keys, and items, this one here, because those return specific parts of the dictionary. Let's play around with a couple actually. Right now, if I run this, we are getting the entire dictionary. But if I add another method here and add values, don't forget the brackets, run this again. Now I am getting some kind of list looking thing with just the values from this dictionary. Keep in mind, this is a different kind of data type. If I put this into the type function, run this again, we are getting class dictionary values. This is a completely separate data type in and of itself. Although you don't have to worry about it too much. There are specific use cases for it and they all work basically automatically and you never think about the data type here. The other method would be keys. And this one gives you all of the keys again in the dig keys data type. Finally, what we could also be looking at is items. And this one is going to return the list, but now it has tuples inside. And those we could also access. We are going to learn how this works later on. And if you go through the list of the different methods, this one should be fairly straightforward. Besides that, you can also use, once again, the len method is incredibly versatile. In here, you can add the test dictionary and we would get three, meaning we have three key value pairs inside of this dictionary. We have one, two, and three. And that's kind of it for the basics of a dictionary. It really isn't that complicated. I guess, let me add a comment here at the top for basics of a dictionary. One topic I do want to cover really quick is converting a dictionary. For example, what we could be doing, I guess, let me print the results straight away. I could get my test dictionary 
and convert it to a list, for example. If I run this, we are now getting an actual list with all of the keys, meaning the list contains A, B, and 1. Something you really want to keep in mind when you are converting the data type here. Tuple would result in the very same outcome. I guess, finally, you could also convert all of this to a string, and then you would get the entire dictionary as a string. Probably not the most useful thing you could do, but, well, you can do it. I do want to cover one more important thing, and that is indexing with dictionaries. And here we have a problem, because indexing the way we have learned it so far does not work. And I think this makes sense. If you have a dictionary like that, and you want to add some kind of indexing operation at the end, let's say with the number zero, this to Python would be kind of confusing. This could for Python mean you want to have the first item inside of the index, or it could mean you are supposed to look for a key with the value zero. In this dictionary, this doesn't exist, but Python doesn't know it when it sees this number here. As a consequence, the normal indexing does not work. But there is another way. Actually, there are two other ways. You would do something like this. Instead of an integer, you would add the name of the key. In this case, we have square brackets with an A. And the A refers to this key here. What is then being returned is the value associated with the key, which is the one. Another way of doing this is the method get. This one works in the same way. You are passing in a key. This key looks for a specific key value pair in the dictionary, and we are getting the value associated returned. Back in my code, I want to print test dictionary, and now I want to get the value for capital A. If I run this now, we get 1, 2, 3, which is the value we have gotten all the way up here. Along the same lines, instead of using square brackets, you could use the method get, and in here, pass in the key you are looking for, and you will get the value associated with it, 1, 2, 3 again. You may be wondering now, what is the difference between these two approaches? And generally, get is slightly better because if you're looking for a key that doesn't exist, let's say x in this case, if you use square brackets, you are going to get an error, meaning your entire code is going to crash, which usually is not a good sign. But if you use the get method, you don't get an error, instead you get none returned, which means, let me add comments, doesn't crash when it cannot find a key. And I guess the comment here would be does crash when it doesn't find the key or a key. Besides that, the two approaches are pretty much identical. And with that, we have covered all of the basic things for this part. So let's do an exercise. What I want you guys to do is to do some research and look up the update method for a dictionary and via this method, add another key value pair to this dictionary. Once again, I am on a website that looks at all of the different methods that we could be using with a dictionary. And the one we want to look for right now is called update. If I click on it, we have an example, a definition, syntax, and quite a few different things that we could be doing. Usually what I'm looking at is the example. In here, we have one dictionary, and then we are using the update method, and we are passing in as an argument another dictionary. And this dictionary has a key and a value pair, and this is going to insert all of this into the other dictionary. So let's have a look at this. I want to get my test dictionary, and I want to use the update method. And what we have seen so far is to insert another dictionary. And in here, we can just add some values. Let's say I want another key. That's not how you spell that. Then a colon, and then some other values. I guess what we haven't used yet is a tuple with, uh, I don't know, some other values in here. If I run this, 
we are not going to see any difference because we are not printing our new dictionary. Meaning now, if I print my test dictionary, I can now see another key and one, two, three at the end. Although you could be using this method in another way as well. Let me get rid of the argument we had so far. And what you could be doing as well is specify some kind of name for a key, in my case C, and then specify a value. Let's say, let me call it test. If I run this now, we get a string C and then test as another value. And you could even add multiple values in here. Let's say D is going to be, I know, one, two, three. It doesn't really matter. And with that, we have, well, another value. I suppose while we are here, there's one more way to add a value inside of a dictionary or a key value pair to be more specific. And that is by using test dictionary and then using brackets and specifying a new key here. This is very similar to using the key here, except now we are creating a whole new key value pair. A value we haven't used yet would be E. And now you can just assign a new value to it. Let's say 100. If I now run this, we have all the way at the end, the key E with the value 100, the thing we have specified here. And that is basically all you have to know about dictionaries. It really is a fairly simple data type, but one that gives a lot of order to your code. 